After upgrading my home network in my last video, I decided it was time to build and install my first ever NAS, or Network Attached Storage. I really needed a better way to store all my video editing work, plus I was excited to try my hand at setting up my own private media library for streaming movies and TV shows. With that in mind, I set myself a budget of a thousand Canadian dollars and undertook a ton of online research to identify the best solution for what I required. This is the first of three videos about choosing the best NAS for me, setting up my NAS and setting up a media server. In this video I explain why I think the Ugreen DPX2800 is the best option and which components make most sense for the budget. If you're not already familiar with the concept of network attached storage, the best way to describe it is that it's a small computer dedicated to mass storage of all your files, photos, videos and other data, but situated locally in your home or office. Instead of subscribing to a cloud storage like OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox and others, you store all your personal data on a device connected to your home network. For example, my family has almost a terabyte of photos and videos and documents that take up the lion's share of our cloud storage that we pay $35 a month to store with Google. The main benefit of having your own local mass storage includes securely backing up files that are just too large to store in the cloud, but also have fast access to them for use in future projects. My video files that I want to back up would fill up the cloud storage very quickly, forcing me to continually spend more money. Also, accessing those files on the cloud would be inconvenient, even with my 3 gigabit home internet connection. What's more, I have terabytes of video clips and footage on my hard drives in my computer, gradually adding to them every single month that passes. Having everything locally stored on my computer is also a risk. I've already experienced one catastrophic computer failure where I lost my most important work, and so it was time to look for a better solution. You can add additional fail-safes on your computer storage, but a NAS enables you to have a dedicated machine to remove the overhead and extra resources needed to store and access massive amounts of your data. NAS drives also have the ability to do some other cool things too, and one of them I'm going to explore in another video, and that's creating my own private Netflix, a local media library featuring my own movie and TV show collection. But first thing is first, what hardware did I choose for my own setup? Being brand new to NAS drives, I undertook a lot of research and I chose the Ugreen NASync DXP2800 for what I think are very good reasons which I cover off in detail. As a summary though, it had the best hardware specs for the price. It was a great option for future proofing. Many reviewers mention it having a very user-friendly interface. And also as a side project, it supported hardware transcoding for building a personal media server. My main criteria was that I wanted a fast, easy to use solution that would utilize my new 10 gigabit ethernet home network. I also wanted to choose from brands that were available to buy in Canada, which helped narrow down the choices. Synology, QNAP and Terramaster are the leading brands available here in Canada with multiple models. Ugreen are a relative newcomer with their own line of NAS drives, but they aren't sold directly in Canada. However, as luck would have it, a US based reseller did ship it north of the border. I set myself a total budget of a thousand Canadian dollars, but was willing to allow myself some wiggle room if necessary. Given that I had to fit both the NAS device itself and the hard drives within that budget, I settled on only looking at two bay options that would accommodate two hard drives. More bays equals more drives, which in turn would increase the cost. Instead, I simply chose two bays and larger individual discs. I could have explored a larger NAS, but my own requirements weren't huge when it came to data storage and mainly revolves around storing and wanting to back up my video work. I'm a relatively small content creator and I tried to make one video every 7 to 14 days, somewhere between 5 to 20 minutes long, depending on the subject. I shoot in 4K, but mostly export my work in 1080p. My main rationale is that 4K footage gives me the ability to punch in and crop any footage during editing to get the perfect composition. Plus, a lot of what I produce doesn't really require 4K playback, with a few exceptions. I often dip back into old footage for new videos, and so I'm gradually filling up my internal 2TB SSDs. In fact, I had to buy a second 2TB SSD as my first drive was almost completely full. 
Then I recently discovered that having my entire catalogue of work and footage on my main PC was less than ideal after my old computer crashed and it wasn't backed up. I ended up losing about two years worth of old files. With this in mind, even though the DPX2800 could support up to 64 terabytes of total storage, I estimated 8 terabytes would probably be enough to give me a couple of years of peace of mind. I could always upgrade in the future with bigger drives using the latest technology. As part of my ambition to securely back up all of my work, I decided to explore using RAID storage for the first time. This would require two or more hard drives to spread the risk of losing data. With an overall capacity of 8 terabytes in mind and the DPX at 2800 having two bays, it would require purchasing two identical 8 terabyte hard drives, with one used to back up the first drive in the event of a catastrophe. I'll explore RAID and what it means in my next video in this series. As mentioned before, another major consideration for me was that I really wanted a solution that took advantage of my recently upgraded 10 gigabit home network. I covered my home network upgrade extensively in my previous video. The much faster network was one of the reasons I chose the DXP2800 as it came with a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port as standard. Unlike the Synology range of NAS solutions for the same price bracket, which only feature a 1 gigabit ethernet connection out of the box. I could have chosen a more expensive Synology DS723 Plus that can support a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter, but the NAS itself retails for around $670 before tax, and that doesn't include the extra $190 for the 10 gigabit ethernet adapter. QNAP and Terramaster did have similarly priced options that also included a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection, but Ugreen had better specifications elsewhere. As Ugreen was a latecomer to the category compared to other competitors, it seemed like they decided they were going to leapfrog the competition with even better hardware specifications. For a start, the Ugreen models have the most powerful CPU out of all of the brands. The DXP2800 features the Intel N100 entry-level notebook CPU, specifically designed for low-power applications which would suit NAS drives. Looking at the raw specifications, the DXP2800 outperforms the competition. The faster the CPU, the faster the NAS will be able to process and transfer data. What's more, the smoother the video playback will be when using your NAS as a media server, but more on that in another video. The second superior design decision Ugreen took was choosing faster and more up-to-date RAM. When compared to Synology, the Ugreen line features four times more RAM and faster RAM for the same price. Unlike Synology and QNAP that use DDR4 RAM, the DPX2800 uses the more up-to-date DDR5 RAM with twice the potential speed of the older specification. However, it is worth noting that the Terramaster F2424 does actually use 8GB of DDR5 RAM at the same price bracket. It's just that the DPX2800 edges the specification battle with the more powerful CPU. Just like the more powerful CPU, more and faster RAM should enable the DPX2800 to operate faster by processing and manipulating data more quickly. This also has beneficial implications for playback as a media server. Also, like all the different models, you can increase the amount of RAM by adding additional compatible sticks, up to a maximum of 16GB from the original 8GB. As a final note, I do want to raise one point. Having the latest hardware can definitely be an advantage. However, there are good reasons for stalwarts like Synology using older technologies, and that's reliability. Older technology enables the manufacturer to work within known parameters, ironing out issues over a much longer period. This is especially important for business critical data where an entire organisation is dependent on uninterrupted workflow to operate. With that in mind, as an enthusiast and consumer level NAS owner, I'm more willing to put up with bugs and hiccups that come with having the latest and greatest hardware. But if you're more focused on having the best uninterrupted operation for your own usage, you might prefer to take the performance hit for a system that has a lower probability of errors. Another major decision for choosing the DPX2800 in conjunction with its superior hardware is the fact that Ugreen supports hardware transcoding. Hardware transcoding enables smoother playback for streamed content on your network as it devotes the DPX2800 hardware to transcoding your video files instead of the more resource intensive software solution. If you're using Plex as your chosen server software, you do have to pay to unlock the feature. 
but I cover that off in more detail in the third video in this series, setting up a media server. Transcoding is the process of converting a video or media files attributes such as codec, bitrate, resolution and others. This ensures compatibility across devices and optimizes performance in various network conditions. If the hardware, like the CPU on the DPX2800, is already designed to manage transcoding, it means the CPU doesn't have to manage both the software transcoding processes and the server software's other tasks simultaneously. Specifically for my own use, my intention was to use the DPX2800 with its hardware transcoding as my first ever media server in my home. Before the DPX2800, I was using my PC over my network to do the job. My PC hardware is fairly beefy with a 14th gen i9 CPU, which is more than enough for streaming even 4K from my hard drive to my family room TV. However, I really like the idea of moving those tasks from my PC, especially as I was going to buy a NAS anyway, and the DPX2800 could do the job. As mentioned earlier, the DPX2800 features the best CPU out of all the competition, with its Intel Celeron N100, and so my expectation is that the hardware transcoding would be smoother than competitive NAS drives. There are a number of other features that are worth mentioning when it comes to the DPX2800 that appeal to me as a newbie in the space. The first is that I've learned you can plug USB media directly into the front of the NAS using either high-speed USB-C or USB-A ports. This means you can transfer files directly to your storage should you so desire. There are also two slower USB 2.0 USB-A ports on the back for other setups you might want to consider. Transfer of data from the USB storage device can be managed via the app or your computer using the NASync software. This would seem to be especially useful for photographers and videographers who might need to back up or access their footage on the go. What's more, with all the NAS models and brands in the category, they all support file sharing with third parties, so you can send files to other contacts securely just like you would with a cloud storage service. The smaller DPX2800 doesn't include an SD card reader like its bigger brothers. This is less than ideal for professional photographers and videographers, so that might be a consideration for small business owners. The HDMI port also piqued my interest. While documentation is limited on the subject, it would seem you can simply plug the NAS into a monitor to control it directly along with a mouse and keyboard. I don't have a need for that in my setup, but it's an intriguing proposition nonetheless. In the same way there is quite a bewildering number of options for the NAS itself, most newcomers are also presented with a bewildering number of options for the types and capacities of different hard drives too. The DPX2800 supports a maximum capacity of 64TB using a combination of two 24TB hard drives and two 8TB NVMe drives. However, as mentioned earlier, I had a specific budget for this project and settled on 8TB in RAID 1 configuration. Luckily, Ugreen has a compatibility list on their website which helps narrow down the choices. One important factor for Ugreen, just like other NAS manufacturers, they recommend using hard drives that are designed for use in mass storage solutions like NAS drives. Hard drives rated for NAS usage are designed for continuous operation. They feature enhanced reliability for heavier workloads, superior error correction capabilities, and are better suited for demands of NAS and RAID configurations. There are some interesting details on how NAS certified drives include Error Recovery Control, or ERC, that is absent from consumer drives. Different enterprise hard drive manufacturers have different versions of ERC, but essentially it's a hardware-based feature to help recover important or critical data in the event of issues, and not make the hard drive a bottleneck or roadblock to operation. Most manufacturers also offer lengthy warranties on their drives in the event of a drive failure, so you can get free replacements. You can verify your warranty status on their website in most cases. In the end, I decided on buying two Seagate Ironwolf 8TB drives for several reasons. Primarily, the price was right given I was trying to stay within my budget. The other considerations were cache, speed and transfer rate. Looking at the compatible 8TB drives, you can see where there are a few drives about the same price. However, I wanted the fastest possible performance, and so I filtered my choice of drives with the best compromise between price, cache size, the fastest disk speed and the best transfer rate. 
The cache in the hard drive is a small amount of RAM that stores the data being requested, reduces latency and increases efficiency by minimizing the read-write operations on the disk. Therefore, the bigger the RAM, the less time is required to access the data commonly accessed during a session. The speed of the disk refers to how fast the disk can spin, expressed in RPM, or revolutions per minute. The faster the disk can spin, the more quickly the head stack assembly and read-write head can find the data. Finally, the transfer rate is how quickly the data can be transferred from the disk to the computer. This is defined as the speed of the disk, but also the data recording density of the disk, or PLATA. In other words, how closely the data is stored together on the disk, so that it requires the read-write head to move less. There are reasons for not choosing the fastest disks, and that's noise. The slower the RPM, the less noise the NAS will generate, which may be an important consideration for your own requirements. But it's worth noting that the slower drives obviously have a slower transfer rate too. Another consideration to provide the best performance is the use of solid state drives, or SSDs, as a way to cache data. While you can use your DPX2800 with hard drives installed without caching, part of my ambition was to use my NAS as a media server. I really wanted to make sure I could provide the seamless playback. Caching using the NVMe SSDs is a way to increase the speed in which the data is read from a compatible NAS and if you install two NVMe SSDs, you can not only read faster, but you can also write data faster too. Building the NAS is very straightforward. It's like a giant Lego set with three or four pieces, depending on your configuration. The drive bays are opened by pressing the tab at the bottom of each slot. You can then use the handle that pops out to slide out the trays. Before you install either the 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drives into the tray, if you have NVMe drives, now is the time to install them. Inside the left side of the case are two NVMe slots. To install an NVMe drive, flip the small flap to open the slot. Peel off the blue plastic cover on the silicon pad and then insert the NVMe drive until flush and then close the flap again to hold the drive in place. To install the hard drives in the trays, flip it upside down and depress the mark tab to extend the tray. Next, slot your hard drive into the tray and slide the extension closed until it clicks. The drive and tray is ready to be inserted into the enclosure. You simply line it up and gently push until flush with the front of the NAS. And that's it. Next, you simply connect to your home network via the supplied Ethernet cable, either at your modem, router or Ethernet jack, and connect the power supply. The NAS will cycle through some diagnostics to make sure it can read the installed drives and then connect to the network. In my next video, I explain how to initialize and configure the DPX2800 for first use, so you can start securing and storing all your important data. Thank you for watching, and as always, it would be great if you were to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home.